welcome back to Blackout, House of Bob's cyberpunk adventure set in the Vantal Megaplex and powered by the Sprawl RPG system. Hi, I'm Christina, and I'm playing Olivia Crow, who's on the run for Mass Corp while trying to figure out who's friend and who's foe. This is Schubert. I'll be playing Bunk, the cyberfunky audio junkie, hacking beats on the Vantal streets. My name is Alex. I'll be playing Garrett, conspiracy theorist, wildcard, senior citizen. I'm Dan. I'll be playing Tiz, the hard-nosed reporter, tracking down corruption no matter the cost. And I'm Jake, your GM. If you want to support the show, check us out on Patreon, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, or just tell your friends about us. Roll on. Last episode, you were attending an Axiom sermon. Olivia had snuck into the back and encountered Dandelion, who was eventually convinced to confess and flee the scene with Olivia. But first, we're going to pop back to the sermon briefly, which is now beginning to wrap up. Dimitri is reaching the crescendo of admonishment in his sermon when the flickering lights suddenly cut into a full-blown blackout. All is quiet for a moment before there's a murmuring in the crowd. I see it. There it is. It's here. At the back of the building, partially occluded by the silhouette of Dimitri, is a glowing blue being, seemingly emerging from the mural. Its form is blurred and choppy, and it appears to rear back and then charge over the assembled crowd before disappearing into the night outside. After another moment, the lights return. Dimitri stands with an even more grim expression. He looks weak in the knees for a moment, leaning against the lectern and grabbing his head. It is coming soon. Repent while you still can. A stagehand runs onto the stage and grabs him by the arm and begins to lead him out the back door. There is a tense silence over the room. And then an eruption of murmuring between the assembled Tiz is going to message to Bunk and be like, Did, is that like a real one? But can you? No, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's over now. Well, that was my first question was, did our cybercoms and everything, did it, all cybernetics shut off during that blackout? Yes. So okay. it was a real one. Really? So it hmm. was a real blackout. And then second question, that blue angel that we saw, or the blue figure, at least, did it seem the same as when I saw the blue figure the last time like because when I saw it the last time I remember it almost seemed like an artifact like on my AR display like Mm -hmm. it still was not as like it's not crisp or precisely formed it's still yeah blurred and kind of choppy around the edges but it did seem more substantive than the first one you saw it felt more like a thing in the world as opposed to you know something you saw on a screen hmm Well, I don't like that at all. (laughs) (laughs) Olivia and Dandelion, there's a moment where the lights turn dark and whatever cyberware you guys have flickers off. But then just as soon as it came, it goes away. Where are you, the two of you going? I'm hoping Dandelion maybe knows a way out of here (laughs) from the back room. (laughs) Because I don't know. (laughs) Sure. Dandelion knows like where the back door is. Yeah, you know, there's a a loading door or something like that for Mm. shipments of church stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Got to be careful, though. There's there's so many guys with guns around there. Why? So many. (laughs) There's like 30 of them. (laughs) I shake down and be like, why are you in this group? (laughs) (laughs) Do you you want to maybe one of you, or I guess uh, actually probably Dandelion, would be rolling an edge and assess... We'll see if it's a good exit or not. Okay. I got a seven. Okay. Impartial success. So, yeah, you you do know that there's a, like, basically a loading door that leads to the garage. And that would be kind of the quickest way out from here. You do know that, like, this would also be the exit where Dimitri would be going out in a moment. So, if you're not quick, it could be an issue. But Mm -hmm. otherwise, it should be clear. All right. We have to get going. Dimitri's uh, big finale is coming up. Great. I send the message over to Garrett. <laughs> Here we go. The dog emoji is the, sent. The dog, the emoji. dog emoji's been sent. And 
I get it too because all messages. Yes. It's, it goes together. to the group chat. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's right. Someone gets two copies of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> are the lights still out? Is the blackout still active no. or are we. No, we're post blackout. Yep. Okay. But Dimitri's on his way out and I'm getting the message that we uh, need to slow him down. Exactly. Yep. We can just go try to talk to him. Tis is here with us. Like he could try to interview Dimitri on his way out. What Garrett's going to do. Oh, God. He's going to fall out of his seat and fake an injury. Fake? I mean, you're pretty you don't injured. Have to. <laughs> yeah. You are already hurt. Fake yeah. a worse injury. Pop open one of your stitches. Uh, no, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that. <laughs> yeah, he's going he's gonna to fall out of his seat and make a scene. Maybe something about the blackout. You can scream about that. Yeah, say it's messing with your pacemaker. Uh, I don't know if they want me to have a pacemaker. Do you think that counts as cybernetics to them? It is, but that's kind of okay, because you're here trying to repent, right? Right. <laughs> you're trying take to it take out. out your pacemaker. Take, take out my pacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, he, he's just going to fall out of his seat. You know, he, like, lost his orientation from the blackboard or whatever, and he falls out of his seat, and he makes a big fuss and a scene about having uh, hurt himself when he fell down. To try to, you know, hopefully some people like crowd around and it gives Bunk and Tiss an opportunity to like weave through the crowd and intercept this guy. A distraction for a distraction. Yes. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Layers upon layers. <laughs> Sounds like Garrett's assisting Tiss and Bunk. More, yeah. Yes, doing, I, think I think so. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. So why don't we do that? So Garrett, <laughs> you can roll an assist for either Tiss or Bunk. Whichever one's okay. best for you. I've rolled... A nine. Okay. Plus my links. Or no, it's plus style because I have that ability. Eleven. Oh, beautiful. Tiss is getting a plus one then. Okay. I think it's probably fast talk. Okay. I'm going to just do some like bold faced lie and say like, I represent a very rich uh, investor, potential investor or something like that. <laughs> the sure. very rich potential investor group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from yeah. the money place. <laughs> LLC. <laughs> I've heard of them. They have a lot of money. <laughs> it's so much potential. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just an eight. Hello, Mr. Dimitri. I represent a... <laughs> Damn it. Now you guys got all me a flustered. <laughs> the very rich person potential investment yeah, uh, group. <laughs> and a, a potential anonymous donor, we'll say. He caught one of your recent sermons, and he wanted me to reach out to you on uh, potentially... Maybe opening up a new uh, church location or something like that. I think you you see again that he he seems kind of affected by what just happened, and his kind of strong appearance has gone away for a second, and he looks a little uh, not quite Garrett levels, but this just <laughs> seems a little frail. I guess is the word I'm looking for in this moment. <laughs> um, and and in particular, the stagehand is kind of trying to you know pull him away. I try to usher him towards a seat. He looks like he needs to sit down. Exactly. Trying to rush him towards the back away from you. But I think like maybe Dimitri just stops for a moment to look at you as you're speaking. And he kind of eyes you up and down and gets a serious look and repeats what he said earlier that it's coming soon. Repent while you still can. But money. <laughs> it fixes all the problems. And then the stagehand kind of pulls them a little harder and they make their way past you. All right, that wasn't a very long delay. <laughs> Hopefully long enough. Means I might get a plus one on my getting out of here. While he tries to walk away, I subtly trip him. <laughs> subtly. subtly. <laughs> I feel like that's ramping it up a lot. <laughs> yeah. to, to, get, to get like 10 extra seconds, like how... How long is that really going to Why delay? don't you just grab his arm and be like, I need to speak to you now. <laughs> you don't have to like <laughs> physically harm him. <laughs> yeah, just make it seem like more urgent. You're like, you don't understand. This is this is going to be billions, you know. <laughs> I want to buy my way into heaven. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Let me I mean, buy my way into heaven. <laughs> lots of people try to want to do that, so. that. That's the thing, though, is if you want a second chance at this, you do have to ramp it up. Because like, you know, you already rolled a, a mixed true. success on the first time. So mm -hmm. sure. Seems like it's also the guy pulling him away that could yeah. be a problem, too. So I, I think you have bought a little bit of time. I think Dandelion and Olivia will get a plus one. But, 
yeah, I mean, you could try something else if you want. I don't think we should. Look at the action clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. true. I'll let it lie where it, where it lies. I'll look at the story clock. Yeah, but we're going to get that once we get Dandelion out of here. Right. That's the most important right. thing. Dandelion's the key. That's the final part of the story. Save right. the dandelion, save the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We pop back to Olivia and Dandelion, who are running through a hallway in the back of the warehouse here. They push a door open into the garage, and you see that there's a couple of vehicles here, one of which is uh, quite a nice-looking kind of black limo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> your, your carjacking instincts kind of kick uh-huh, in. <laughs> for sure. I'm, like, rubbing my hands together. The, the other one looks like more just like a utility kind of truck, uh, delivery truck or something like that. And Olivia's like, oh, I guess that one. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the plan to try to hotwire this truck real quick to get out here? Yeah, I think okay, so. Cool. I want my birds to just land on the car all cool style. I'm like, we're going on this one. Sounds good. So either way, you're getting a plus one on this. Mind, 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 mind. <laughs> I guess it's probably mind. Hotwire a car? Sure. I got a nine, then plus three. Whoa. Fucking hotwire this motherfucking car. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's completely second nature for you. You could do this in your sleep at this point. You're like, oh, that's a Model 736, and you just press this button here, and you're good to go. <laughs> it's actually always on and ready to, to take. Oh, my God. Garrett's so jealous right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. If only he could be there. Meanwhile, Dandelion is pressing the button for the garage door, which creaks up to the top, and you guys pile into the delivery truck and uh, beat a hasty retreat. Tiz makes his way out of the, the front door back to the RV. Yeah, you guys can just take the regular way out. Yeah, we can just walk out of here. Mm-hmm. I guess there's the issue of Garrett throwing a fit right now. Somebody's got to help him. A, a, f- a fit, I feel like, is an unfair description. <laughs> it's a tanty. A malady. He's uh, throwing a malady. All right, Bunk, I'm going to ask if anyone here is a doctor. Mm-hmm. Okay, you get it? Okay. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, yeah, nudge. You get it? Bunk? <laughs> Wait, am I a doctor? I send you a doctor emoji. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not a... Okay. I'm not a and, doctor. And so you I, don't actually have to be. I'm not a doctor. I'm a beat hacker. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Can anyone heal this man with music? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the only cure. Yeah, is there a beat hacker here? <laughs> <laughs> is there a DJ in the house? <laughs> <laughs> oons, oons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I run to Garrett's side and I, I kneel down beside him and I yell, is there a doctor in the house? Can I have 2d6? <laughs> I, I wait for an actual doctor first. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want one. <laughs> well, I rolled a three, so there is one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a woman in the crowd who stands up and says, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So what, what's the matter? And she rushes over and sees... He's just Garrett. Garrett kind of... Oh, there's so much. Where do we begin? <laughs> <laughs> this man is not savable, she says. There's your problem. I'm just, just going to have to put him down. <laughs> yeah. What, did a horse doctor treat this guy? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> These are horse doctor stitches. <laughs> and she, she quickly examines you over and... She kind of puts the back of her hand against the side of your head, goes there a couple times, looks over at Tiss there and says, does this man have cyber comms? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know this man. He just looked in distress. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, they're malfunctioning. It must be because of the blackout. We got to get those out of him right now. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see this coming. Yeah, just tell me where to cut. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, lovely. Whips at his knife. Oh, yeah, he's ready. <laughs> tell me where to make the incision. Help me take him to the back. And she like, kind of grabs him by the arms and looks at you expectantly to grab his feet. And she's motioning towards the back door. I think okay. I'll, at this point, I'll, like, come <laughs> over and just act like I'm a helpful person in the crowd, like, helping bring All him right. over. 
And I like whisper in Garrett's ear, I'm like, you can act normal anytime now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you're not by his head. <laughs> I'm going to wait until we're in the next room so it's still not in front of a crowd of people. And then, I don't know, maybe sure. we just uh, do away with the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Not killing the doctor. Well, you know, just maybe lightly maiming the doctor. Why? Not- she she's the only nice person here. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna knock you out before we knock out this doctor. <laughs> and you don't wake up with no cybercoms. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> you guys head towards the back door, and as she actually reaches behind her and with one hand and punches in the code to the door, it seems like she belongs here. Oh, um, maybe she is a bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she already thinks that like cyberware is bad. I mean, first off, she was at this meeting, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. And pulls you guys into the hallway, and the door closes behind you with a click. Uh oh. <laughs> Hope you guys recorded that number. What's the worst that could happen, honestly? He gets his cyber comms removed. Can I get a look around the room? Oh, right now you're just in the hallway. Okay, can I get a look around the hallway? Yeah, so the, the, like again, there's a few doors on either side that lead to offices and break rooms and things like that. On the far end of the hallway are the stairs that lead downstairs, and she's motioning you towards that. Um, Shouldn't we uh, call an ambulance or something? Are the, are the other doors open? Yeah, the door to the break room is propped open. I okay. mean, it looks it looks like he's getting better. Do you think this <laughs> man could afford an ambulance? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll I'll pay for it. <laughs> Garrett says, "No, no, 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 no. It's okay. Um, I'll just need your help getting me down there." And I like you know, sort of stand myself up and you know hold my one side up with my cane, my horse cane, and. Um, and then, like, you know, reach out to have the doctor, like, you know, help me yeah. towards the stairs. And then when we, like, get to the break room with the open door, I'm going to shove the doctor into the break room and then close the door and <laughs> lock them in there. <laughs> that sounds good. Or at least shut them in there somehow. Okay. Yeah. No, that seems like... A reasonable compromise <laughs> between murder and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, murder. Between murder and completely letting her get away with lobotomizing Garrett. That's a pretty good compromise. It's all for the greater good, you guys. <laughs> Let's do a meat roll, then. Eight. An eight will still be a partial success. I can get hurt here. Yeah, how would you get hurt, though? Well, we're trying to shove her in. She could potentially fight back. She might have a weapon on her. She might be strong. Yeah. She she could be just like a a big beefy doctor. <laughs> you, get your, you get the door closed on your hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hurts real bad. Oh yeah, that's perfect <laughs> actually. I think maybe it's less that like she's like attacking you than she's just putting mm-hmm. up more of a struggle than you expected yeah. and it's it's wearing on you. So yeah, so I think you just take one harm. That's fine. Get my hand scrunched. But we are supposed to choose two. So basically, I take harm or something of value breaks. We can't afford yeah. to make noise. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any cool cyberware in your hand that broke with it? <laughs> no, I mean, I like, I have my cybercoms. Um, Those are broken already, though. They're already broken. Uh, I already am having to walk with a cane. <laughs> yeah, we don't have anything of value. No, to I guess I'm just going to have to take harm. <laughs> Same thing. During the scramble, you accidentally lean your full weight on your broken leg and it's... It hurts. Yeah. yeah. Real bad. So just a uh, harm as well. Okay. So you guys kind of accidentally got into the back room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. um, I think I was working so hard to get into. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want to do anything while you're here or if your plan is still just yeah, to I escape. get some extra shit. I kind of want to snoop yeah. around. I really wish I hadn't called for a doctor. Like, we could have just walked out and it would have been yeah. fine. <laughs> Here's my thing is... It was funny. Could we sort of like leverage the fact that we, that we did get back here into just getting like a really good escape, like a fire escape where uh, nobody's going to see us walking out of here. Or get into Okta Quindley's office. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that we, we're going to raise the action clock by doing anything. <laughs> if, if your choice is escape, then yeah, I think you can use that instead of, you know, trying to sneak around. I kind of want to just get out of here. I mean, you make a good point. What's our clock? Can we look at our clocks again? All I know is our action is at 2300. And if yeah, we, we have one make thing. the tiniest little bit of noise, this yeah, if we, all if we, falls yeah, apart. Let's, let's leave now. <sighs> yeah. It's a little anticlimactic, but it's probably the smartest thing to and, do. And have we already like gotten the the story tick for 
Olivia getting away with Dandelion, have we? No, but you think once you have a chance to okay. debrief with Dandelion, you should get the info you need. Yeah, that's what I want. Can I just like snatch some papers or something off of a desk or whatever? Or like, <laughs> I mean, they could just be nothing. <laughs> or convince Tiss to like take some photos with his glasses of whatever Don't you we can have see our way out. Papers. <laughs> Got all those pamphlets. I feel like we can get some sort of like information on our way out, e- even if we don't explore deeper. I think that's the choice you have to make. Are you taking the time to look for stuff? In which case, there will be roles involved. If you're just escaping, mm-hmm. you're out. That's more of a deep dive that I don't really want to tackle right now. All right. Okay. Bunk is just like, all right, guys, you can stay here if you want, but I'm out. <laughs> and, and I'm like heading through that first exit and I like get on my bike and... Peace out of here. Oh, I wanted to leave forever ago. Let's go. All right. Well, <laughs> G- Garrett knows he's not going to make it out safely on his own in this condition. Yeah. So he follows the guys. You guys drive off and eventually, you know, meet back up. The delivery truck in your guys' RV meet up. And, you know, there's the kind of polluted water of the canal that runs underneath this bridge. That kind of bubbles away as you guys meet. Sick. Don't drink that. And Olivia, you know, opens the door and steps out with a very nervous and frazzled looking dandelion. What questions do you have for him? Do you, uh, do you need any water? How are you doing? (laughs) Yeah. How are you feeling (laughs) after all of that? Yeah. I'm a little nervous. Who are you? Oh, these are some of my gigantic crew that I was talking about earlier. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The the smallest fraction of the gigantic crew. Only 1% of 1%. Yeah. <laughs> Tip of the iceberg, eh? Yeah. You have met Garrett before because he was asking you questions at the park. I remember you. You're that angry old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's our face man. <laughs> <laughs> some might say he's the leader of the group. No. no one said that. <laughs> Who said that? No, some, some might. No, some not might. even Garrett says that. Because every time you're about to, we shove you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, yeah, let's get, let's get settled up. Get, get you some hot soup, some water, and uh, let's get rolling, Tiss. I, I pop open a lawn chair. For him to yeah. sit on. You Should guys we... make sure he's comfortable and, you know, kind of smooth over some of the difficult parts of this situation. But eventually Dandelion opens up a bit and is willing to discuss. Is there, again, particular questions that you guys have for him? Or Well, I definitely want to know what he knows since he's been in the mm-hmm. Axiom. Mm-hmm. He's got to have seen some dirt that we can get extra. Yeah, he's been in direct contact with Octa Quinley. Mm-hmm. So... He's definitely seen some stuff. Mm-hmm. I also sure. know rich people who are involved. Yeah. Well, maybe not involved, but are involved with the Axiom. Right. Yep. Yeah, so you just talk for a bit, and definitely the Axiom's tendrils are digging further into the city than you might have expected. Dandelion describes meetings with a lot of you know, different pretty high-end corporate executives and things like that, sometimes with Okta, occasionally with Jala, the cyberware lady that you saw in the video. One of the most recent meetings was the one that he had right after you guys saw him in the park. And that was a meeting with a man that he knew as, or maybe that he later found out was the leader of a gang, the Strap Hangers. Oh. They were formed by former Vantal Transit Authority members. So they know the transit systems in the city and they use that as their you know, way to move around contraband and that kind of thing. So it's it's a gang that takes public transport everywhere. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> they care about the environment. They take public transit and they manipulate public transit to use their, to further their nefarious schemes. It's kind of wholesome. Like traffic stuff on the bottom of trains and things. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, and, like, they can get into certain places that would otherwise be difficult to get into if they didn't have these connections to the Transit Authority. And remember, the Transit Authority is not just buses. It's also, you know, the harbor and the vessel and, you know, all sorts of stuff like that mm-hmm. in the city. So mm-hmm. the, the airports and things like that, too. What does strap hangers mean? What, is, what does that name mean? It is a derogatory term for commuters because they're holding on to the strap on the train. <laughs> uh, that's nice. Good. Anyway, the content of that meeting is what's more interesting, is that they were basically trading to Okta ID badges and uniforms for vessel employees. So for the electromagnetic space launch, the railgun. 
Right. Whoa, that's a big deal. Yeah, All so right. they were getting the stuff that they would need to infiltrate the space launch. Dude, I yeah. say to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that people would die. <laughs> but but we also do charity outreach. And <laughs> Look at all the soup I gave out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. From watching that video that we found on his hard drive, we knew that that there was like a satellite that they had intercepted, right? Mm-hmm. Don't we have that satellite now? No, we have the that like killer drone. Okay, yeah. we don't have the satellite though. Okay. The video from Henry, there was two things in the package that they were exchanging. One was a sentry drone, one was a satellite. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. That satellite is probably why they got access to the vessel so that they could launch like their own satellite. Mm. Or shoot it down with their satellite. Mm. So the reason Jericho died was because he found out they were probably going to infiltrate the the launch. They're going to do a real terrorism, mm-hmm. basically. Damn. Okay. I got a real big question for you, my man. Yeah? <laughs> are the Blue Angels real? What are they? They're, they're glowing, glowing balls of light. <laughs> well, I don't think Daniel <laughs> knows. <laughs> and they shoot their rays at you. Oh, God. <laughs> you, feel, you feel their healing power. What? Have you actually experienced them? Because this guy, and I point to Bunk, he's seen them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't seem so benign to me, if you ask me anything. Now Garrett and Tiss have seen them as well. Then they have all seen it. <laughs> Tiz is still, like, skeptical, though, because he feels yeah. like it was so conveniently timed. Yeah, it sounds like it was a projection, the way yeah. you guys yeah. describe it. Yeah, that's what Bunk thinks it is, too. But I, either way, I mean, I'm saying I believe Bunk at this point, that you saw something anyway. Yeah. And it's killing people. How do you know it's killing people? I know because this guy, Point and Bunk again, told me it turned off some dude's, like, heart or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but did he die? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's common knowledge that this has caused deaths. Um, that's part of the reason the Axiom is, yeah. you know, is building steam because people are scared. Dandelion, though, keeps out of the news. <laughs> that's that's anti-Axiom propaganda. <laughs> wow, how, how oh. washed out is this guy? Oh, man. <laughs> so you've never seen one. You've only heard about it. Yeah, very much. I would have asked Dandelion, are you an idiot or are you like... <laughs> <laughs> or are you purposely being naive for some reason that we don't know about? <laughs> yeah. You were just saying that whole thing about propaganda, but you just described a whole terrorist situation of which millions will die. <laughs> I'm like, Danny Line, you seem like a nice dude, man. Like, I, I don't think you want people to die, but no, like, y- you are complicit in that. You realize that, right? I mean, they're not paying me nothing. Uh, that might be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're actively volunteering for this, but it's just also the fact that it's like, dude, you know what's happening and you're not trying to stop it. He's a volunteer. Danny Line doesn't know that, like, what they're doing is a terrorist act. Like, he knows they're trying to get onto this, onto this launch, but he but doesn't you, know why. You know they're bad dudes. Like, <laughs> you saw them give you a box that killed a man. They told me Jericho was a really bad man. And even if that's true, does he deserve justice outside of the law? Street justice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just go like, this guy's an idiot, but we yeah. got this all on tape, right? This. <laughs> this actually might matter to Danny Lyon. So I'm like, Danny Lyon, we actually did a ton of research into Henry Jericho, and he wasn't a bad guy at all. He was He was just like a normal dude. He was making a podcast, and he learned a bit too much information and that's why the passing angel axiom wants him dead is because he learned too much and I, I'm sure they wouldn't mind like having you killed just because you've talked to us and they're not your friends <laughs> well I, I'm, I'm done with them now like obviously like I can't go back nope that's true you can't stay with us, though, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you have to go, to go home. home. You can't stay here. Yeah. Can't stay here. <laughs> it's okay. My daddy's rich. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> that fixes a lot of problems. That the makes me feel off. much less <laughs> bad about it. <laughs> Do you need us to drop you off somewhere, dude? <laughs> no, I, I can Uber. <laughs> I don't think that's safe, but okay. <laughs> Fuck this guy, so. Yeah. Let's dump him. 
I don't want him to die either. <laughs> you see Dandelion pull out his very nice phone. Oh. <laughs> I just start walking to the car. I'm like, I'm going to pawn this shit. <laughs> Daddy, I need a ride. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last we see of him. Yeah, I'll just walk away. <laughs> yeah, we start up our two cars and just drive off. <laughs> Oh, so you're keeping the... Oh, hell yeah. Well, at the very least, I'm going to pawn it later. Oh, the delivery? Yeah, yeah. Truck, yeah. Oh, for for sure. sure. So, yeah, Dandelion walks off past some street lights, and you see his... Into a bog. ...silhouette walk away. <laughs> Till we meet again. Hopefully never. <laughs> I shut out the window. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> and you ponder over the information you just got, which is that... Clearly, the Axiom is something very big planned involving the vessel space launch. I think earlier, Brunk said he had a theory. Or I do have a theory. Ooh. It might be like a wild burn nightly type of theory, but... <gasps> but you're into that now. <laughs> it's probably not that crazy. <laughs> I'll say that, yeah, absolutely, with the information you got from Dandelion there, I filled out the last box of the nice. story clock. Excellent. Yes. That's awesome. Bunk looks around at the crew after Danny Lyon leaves, and he's like, guys, what if these blackouts are basically just caused by some device that, like, sucks out the power from, like, all the local devices and then causes these blue angels, basically? Hallucinations. Well, like, causes the blackout, but also causes the blue angels. Like, I don't think they're hallucinations. I think they're, like, projections or... Some mm. type of like concentrated energy force type Like a of thing. hologram. Yeah, it's just like a hologram. It's bullshit. They just focus a bunch of vibrations in one area. I don't know. What's the point of it then? We go, yes, Garrett, it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's bullshit to confuse people. We've listened to this on Burn Let Nightly before. Let me just before. say this to you so you feel good. Burn Nightly is right. <laughs> <laughs> Burn Nightly is right. <laughs> and I'm glad yeah. that you all agree this time. <laughs> this time, yes. I disagree with him on Cube Earth, but I... <laughs> Cube Earth? Cube Earth. No, no, let's move. Oh, Cube Earth. Keep going. Cube. <laughs> yeah, I heard Cube Earth. it was the weird, like, Cube Earth conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You know he has one. <laughs> he has yeah. one on everything. Yeah. But no, I. that's just my theory. It's like, these blackouts are caused by some device. Oh, like they're they're clearly like they have these like alien almost technology devices. Mm -hmm. So these blackouts are caused by something that sucks in all the power, causing the blackout. It's, it's probably the axiom the that's doing it. Maybe yeah, it's the, it's the uh, axiom. Maybe it's the satellite we're about to. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Is maybe the satellite is like one of those devices? Maybe oh. it's, they're they're sneaking one onto the satellite, or it's the next step. And it's going to take down the whole world's power when the blackouts happen. Yeah, totally. I'm thinking that. That's what I'm thinking. We should yep. bring this to burn. <laughs> Let's Let, make him get it out we there. We should bring this to burn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to discredit us, sure. I mean, it's hard to say no when like, he's actually a good way to get a lot of information out to a lot of people, <laughs> which is annoying. <laughs> 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 or, you know, I could write an article or... <laughs> that, I mean, that sounds like a good contact to use next mission. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Garrett's final contact is Burn Nightly. <laughs> oh, my God. Hopefully he can talk to him. He's going to be so starstruck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. I think that sounds really plausible. But, yeah, so that's my theory is the satellite is either one of these devices or a continuation Mm -hmm. of these devices that cause the blackouts. I'm thinking that they send that thing up there and all of Vantel could lose power and all kinds of people could die. So Yeah, maybe, maybe not should... just Vantel. Yeah, so maybe we could make up for some of the horrible things we've done by uh, stopping Saving that. everybody? Yeah. And then we all do a freeze frame high five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where's the money in that? <laughs> Speaking of money, the last thing to do is to get paid. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. go to oh, yeah, Idris Elba. Go. Or what was their name? Yeah, Idris Elba. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the lady. Idris Elba. <laughs> Her name was Adira. Adira, thank you. Um, Adira Elba. <laughs> who, who you later discovered was a member of the Seti family. Which mm -hmm. I think we're going to try to leverage for some extra cashola. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Well, speaking of extra cashola, let's just uh, pawn that truck real quick and you Yay. get one cred. Nice. She asked you to meet you in that skate park again where you first met her. 
So what what are your guys' kind of approach to this? Are you just telling her everything? Have you given her certain information? Or have you prepared a presentation? What's the plan? Okay, maybe we should talk about this before we specifically yeah. meet yeah, up with yeah. her. But I think we should leave out the quote-unquote assassins, if you will, because they were being used. And her family has enough power that they could probably retaliate against them, right? So I don't think that they we deserve that. We can just say that, that they're like... Mm-hmm. You know, nameless Axiom drones or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They sent some drones. No one goes they were. after Dandelion family. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, how'd you he gets get away here? with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he started following us. <laughs> We'd inadvertently create a war between two wealthy families. Nice. <laughs> I mean, that's actually interesting <laughs> when you put it like that. But I, I mean, the other not so rich people <laughs> in, the, in the situation. Yeah, I'm okay with leaving. Lex Bogdan BBB. Yeah, we know who Those asked guys for the bit. for the hit. Yeah, and so I think we just lay it out at Axiom's feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Octa Quinley is who you want to talk to, and her boss is Dimitri Genova. Yeah. yeah, we give her the bullet points. Like your brother was murdered because they got too close mm-hmm. to the Axiom, found out some information he shouldn't have. Yeah, maybe we give her that tape. Even the one where he's stealing. He's sneaking around. Yeah. Well, except that that shows the whole satellite thing. But she doesn't know what that's about. I guess not. But She she does want to know why. Like, the information he found out that was worth killing him over. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, just saying he found something out isn't going to be sufficient. Yeah. See, I feel like showing her that video and saying that Mm -hmm. this seems to go way deeper than what he found, but they didn't want even this to be found. No, that's really good. I just think uh, maybe we should have won piece of information almost that we can use to sort of leverage some more money like you were talking about, Olivia. Oh, right. That's a good point. She doesn't need to know everything, but she might want to know, you know, some more details. And Maybe we can find this video for you. <laughs> 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 yeah. She might want the stuff that, of his that we have in the terms of like his last words, his podcast, all that stuff. We can give her the old hard drives and stuff we took. Yeah. Okay, so you'd be giving her the video? Yeah, I mean, we made copies of all of this yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a copy of it anyway. Yeah. It is just some incriminating evidence she could also mm-hmm. use. But, I mean, it's only incriminating. To the axiom, I would think. And that Jala person. Yeah. I, I guess it's just that maybe we could, uh, yeah, we could use that information before it leaks otherwise, but... Well, we don't know for a fact that she's going to go like to the news or anything with that. No, but her family is very powerful. I know, but yeah. her family also like disowned him. So maybe it's just on her own. That's true. She just wants to find out for herself, I guess. Yeah. Maybe we should ask what she wants this information yeah. <laughs> instead of guessing. Yeah. We could maybe potentially edit it to, uh, you know, disclude some certain information. Yeah, it gets fuzzy at certain points. <laughs> We put a magnet next to it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned from the best. Okay, so it sounds like we're giving her everything except for the stuff that we learned about the launch, basically. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, not exactly who did it mm-hmm. in the terms of, you right. know, the four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, not nothing about the launch or about the angels specifically. Mm-hmm. Okay, Adira, here's what we have to give you. We know he was killed by the Axiom, unfortunately. We know the person behind it was uh, Octa Quinley. You'll be able to see her in this video that we're giving you. This is the last video that your brother took. He is obviously working on this case for his podcast. And he saw something he shouldn't have. They seem to be loading something up or some sort of delivery in this video. And they spotted him, unfortunately. So that's why he died. Is there any questions you have for us? Yeah, I mean, she seems to, you know, take a minute to absorb what you said. And she looks like she's trying to trying to hold back, looking sad. She's trying to be serious and cool. But you can tell that she's obviously upset with the information that you've given her. She points, you know, while you're showing the video and says, like, what, what, what is this stuff? Why is it so important? Why would they kill over it? 
That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't pre- have a prepared statement for that. <laughs> I will now refer to my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like to me, I mean, we don't know specifically yeah. Adira, but to me, it looks like these are weapons. A church that's supposedly telling people to get rid of their cyberware is using lasers you know like drones bunch of hypocrites yeah Yeah. there's some high tech stuff here that anyone who believes in what they do they shouldn't have we did recognize one of the deliveries right like one of the things we saw was the sphere in the video we do have that right so we know that one of the things in that video was the actual murder weapon yeah Mm -hmm. exactly well not actually but (laughs) or one just like it yeah one similar to it Okay, I mean, this seems to, I don't know if satisfy is the word, but at mm-hmm. least ticks the box that she asked for you. It gives her more questions about, you know, what actually is going on here, though. We get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of you, I guess, Tiss, can roll getting paid. You add the number of unfilled legwork segments, which is three. So you get plus three. Nice. Nice. All right. I rolled an 11. Nice. Plus the three, Woo. so 14. Give us all the money. <laughs> so you can see getting paid move on the screen there. You get to choose three from the list. One is it's not a setup or ambush. That's probably a good one. You are paid in full. The employer is identifiable. The meeting doesn't attract the attention of outside parties. Or you learn something from the mission. Everyone marks experience. You'll get experience anyway, but this would be more experience. All right. We did a decent amount of work in the mission to find out who she was. So I feel like yeah, you already know her. Yeah, no, we're fine with that. We definitely yeah. don't want it to be a setup. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking that one, get paid in full, and this meeting doesn't attract attention. Yeah. That's probably yep. a good one. I'm cool with the, that. That's so. the play it safe route anyway. Yeah. yeah. I do like more XP though. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're going into something real dangerous. So like not yeah. having any uh, ticks on our clock. Let's not start out on the bad foot. So no betting three anymore, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on this one too though. <laughs> no <laughs> promises. <laughs> Well, you guys get three times your stake back. Ooh, nice. So Bunk will get six credits. Garrett yeah. will get nine. Olivia Ooh. gets three. And Tis gets nine. You're able to mark experience. So for the mission total, it's five. Ooh. Whoa. We get five experience? Yeah. What? You're supposed to get experience kind of throughout the mission, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. we didn't do that. So you just get five total for doing the whole thing. Nice. Cool. And you each get to form a link. I think the most intense moment of the whole mission was like the fight between Blunderbuss yeah. and us. Yeah. And I feel like that is where where the bonds were formed <laughs> for me anyway. In blood. In blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Tiss because he's the one that like handed me the flashbang grenade. We kind of like worked together to yeah. kind of save Garrett's ass there. I think that makes I'm sense. I'm yeah. also going to go with Tiss because we both use the same knife to stab <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Blood you brothers. guys bond over your new <laughs> obsession with knives. We all put our hands in on top of the knife. I, I don't. <laughs> it was like a Caesar situation. <laughs> so, Tiss, you're increasing your link with Bunk and Garrett by one. Which bumps them both up <laughs> past the three mark. Oh, wow. Are they both at four? Yep. Oh, okay. A special thing happened. Yeah, so we'll, we'll deal with that after. First, who are you giving your plus one link to? I really feel like it was bunk if you ask me. Like, yeah. not having to deal yeah. with that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with bunk. We were fighting Bailey together. Like, Yeah. Yeah, you guys were like two swords fighting together. Mm-hmm. Olivia. I'm going to say I'm going to give my point to bunk just because even though it was unsuccessful, we still were working together to try to do hacking. And that's, yep. in the end, something Olivia really does want to learn. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. you guys did a lot of that working together. So that makes sense. So yeah, if you did increase one of your links to four, both of you get experience, and then it resets back to zero links. Mm-hmm. So you guys will have some XP to spend for sure. And then we mm-hmm. get to think about our special moments together. Yeah. yeah. We all like roll the van out to like some spot in the middle of nowhere and roll open the side door of it and, and sit and eat noodles together with some you know, like vaporwave music in the background. Watching the sunset. <laughs> yeah. 
Sure. Wow. So reflect on everything that's happened. Yeah. So we, we pull outside the horse ranch and we find a nice. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's driving? Not not this. Anyone but this. Garrett. Garrett's driving. Okay, Garrett, take us far away from here. <laughs> I'm assuming this is while I'm pawning the van. That's why I'm not sure, around. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Windows roll down. He can feel the like wind blowing and the hair on the sides of his head, and yeah, it takes everybody out to grab a shake and some noodles. And nice. We all just have a. A nice moment together. Maybe you guys actually drive you know, farther south in the city than you've been before. And you pull out into the more rural area where the sky is a little clearer and there's less buildings. And you can see off in the distance where the vessel railgun actually, where the terminus is. And, you know, every like 15 minutes you see a, a burst of light as it's something launches out of the railgun and out into space. And you start thinking about what the Axiom's plan is here. And... You guys share this nice little moment, and we'll be back in two weeks. Thank you for listening to The House of Bob. If you'd like, you can give us a review on Apple Podcasts. We'd really appreciate it. It helps other people find the show. You can also just tell a friend. If you'd like to chat with us, we're at The House of Bob on most social media platforms. You can also check out our Discord server and chat with us and like-minded individuals. A quick announcement today, I recently released a D&D 5th edition supplement on DM's Guild. The Myriad Market contains six different shopkeepers, a total of 30 magic items between them. The items are described narratively with shopkeeper dialogue, and stat blocks are presented separately, so you can keep your engaging marketplace role-playing encounter separate from the nitty-gritty stats. The items are all designed to be unusual with unique effects or interesting drawbacks, and we put a lot of work into it, and I think there's some really awesome stuff in there. It also includes art from Hob members Sean and Trevor and contributions from a couple of our listeners. That's the Myriad Market on DM's Guild. I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. That's Volt, Tom Wesley, Mike from Tales from the Glass Guarded World, Scooter Emerson, Robert, Ray Kearney, Mary Margaret, Luke Conroy, Kieran Duffy, Keith Haddad, Josh Jordan, Jessica, Luck at 12, and Jessica Colvin. Thanks, everybody. The artwork for this episode was by Sean at Sean Makes. The audio production was by Alex of Astronomic Audio. And the music was by John Julius, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Thanks again for listening. Roll on. Street Justice!